Hello, welcome to this special edition of the Health Research Report. And today, the reason for this special edition is because we are going to counter an argument in regards to an author or a doctor, Dr. Paul something or another, who has written a book called Do You Believe in Magic in regards to alternative medicine. It's pretty much a hit piece in regards to uses antiquated knowledge and data. But we're not here to debunk the antiquated studies brought up through experimental bias. We're here to look at the thinking behind why such hit pieces are derived or produced and then somehow do an incredible job of PR magic makes the mainstream media. Well, also The Guardian, which I really respect as a paper, and The New York Times, too. Well, we call this, when we call Do You Believe in Magic, what we're really doing is we're welcoming what I call museum pieces. These museum pieces are kind of like Neanderthal man. What we have is individuals out there who, for whatever reason, don't really like to look at data and research, and they like to divide and conquer Case in point. All right. What is a supplement? Can you answer that question? Is there a definition in Webster's Dictionary? Uh, can you define it? If I have aspirin and vitamin C, which one is a supplement? Which one is alternative medicine? Now, if I have vitamin C and aspirin, and you believe vitamin C is alternative medicine, what makes that alternative in your mind? Propaganda. Because in reality, if aspirin or vitamin C has the ability to help you in your condition, they are both medicines. With the one exception that one has a better PR marketing firm than the other. So one's PR firm can say, hey, take this on a daily basis. Even so much to the point that you could die of a vitamin C deficiency. You can't die of an aspirin deficiency, but yet they'll have you take aspirin every day and vitamin C. They'll say, oh, maybe it causes kidney stones or whatever. You get the point. In fact, so much so is the PR. Now, if me and I digress, remember we're talking about the book. Do you believe in magic? But to go further, let's say, for example, May 24th, there was an article published, on, published in the online journal of Nature Communications. What was it? It was that vitamin C was discovered to kill the most drug-resistant forms of tuberculosis known to the Fenton reaction. Now, knowing how tuberculosis is a plague among modern mankind, you would think that vitamin C would at least made a footnote in some of the major news channels. Again, no PR firm, no patents. And so, the mass media, which you think, whatever mass media is, we're just saying ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, or whatever it is, uh, just happened to miss this, one of the most ground-breaking stories in regards to vitamin C as a supplement or medicine. I get confused. Well, let's just say vitamin C, we'll call that a medicine. Because why? It's curing something. But... Somehow, you believe the magic. Vitamin C to them is a supplement. Henceforth, not a medicine. Think about the logic. So let's welcome the Dr. Paul, which we'll call it. We'll call him our Neanderthal men of science. You know, pretty much in the same group of people that were believing that the world was flat. They exist. They're out there. We'll welcome them because they're becoming quickly the relics of society. Because they don't deal with data. Also, in quote, for example, they say there's only four supplements worth taking. At 51,000, we're trying to market, giving the impression that people just make this stuff up. Well, obviously not made up like was the recent article on the asthma medication that discovered the studies were fabricated through the no drug company bothered researching the data that this crazy doctor who poisoned his girlfriend just made up the studies on this asthma medications. Well, you can research that yourself, too. Or of India, or Vasta or let's say Zocar, uh, what, what, uh, Zedia, I can just go on and on and on, but again, I digress, because those are medicines. All right, so, 
back to the Neanderthal man of science. What this argument really comes down to is this. Not about data, not about facts, not about experimental bias or prejudice. It comes down to fear. But one quote from this doctor, the whole argument comes into picture. And this is what it says. Science, however, has never been a driving force for supplement taking. To arguments that supplements do no good, the 50% of Americans who take these things would say, so what? I'm taking them anyway. Supplements aren't about evidence-based medicine. They are about a deep distrust of modern diets, science, and the healthcare system. Catch the line. They are about a deep distrust of modern diets, science, and the healthcare system. Number one, it's not about distrust of science. It may be about distrust of the modern diets. If you're talking the modern diet of today, which will have an advertising budget drip for jelly donut pancakes far outweigh all the advertising for, let's say, supplements, then that is exactly the same one. And also, too, when you think about it, if you desire to argue with the praise man, this is why I'm not breaking it down when it comes to looking at fact for fact. When you want to argue with crazy men or Neanderthals, who is the one that's really crazy? You want to check out the data, I'm on newsletter 157. You want to argue against my facts? You're more than welcome to. Go to healthresearchreport.me. Or you want to read the negative and the dark sides more of the pharmaceutical industries? Go to engineerevil.com. There's good and there's bad in both industries. Doctors are heroes. But all because someone that has the title of a doctor doesn't necessarily make them a hero. Keep that in mind. Again, this is Ralph Turk Channel, Healthy Research Reports. Thank you very much for listening to this rebuttal.